National Women's Day was yesterday, but even though it has now passed, the conversations at Sparks aren't just for one day a year. So we wanted to carry on the discussion today by talking about the challenges that women face. There are many. We do so much, and yet for many of us, we never feel like we're doing enough. So joining me for this chat, we've got Amy, Andrea, and Shona back, and success coach Carlin Purcell. <laughs> feeling we're all going to have thoughts on this. The, um, <laughs> the International Women's Day theme this year is Each for Equal. So the idea that collectively each individual can help create a gender equal world by challenging the stereotypes and by fighting the biases and by broadening perspectives. So I'm wondering, a lot of people I feel look at feminism and the role of women and say, oh my gosh, we've come such far away. Like, is there really any more that we need to be fighting for? Um, and I'm wondering from your perspective, where do you think we still need to be f working on and fighting for gender equality? I know what my answer is to that, but yeah. uh, you're like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to handle that? What, what do you think, Amy? Should we well, still be like, I just bring it back it? to my second ever job. Yeah. And I, I learned this lesson at a very young age and it's it hasn't disappeared. I got a friend a job at a bookstore I was already working at. Yeah. I had already been a swim instructor and I worked at a fruit and vegetable store. And we saw our first paychecks once I got him the job and he was making 85 cents more than me. Yes. So I went to the manager, like I was 17. I said, why is he making more than me? And he said, because he's a man. Oh. <laughs> like li literally oh. said the word. Okay. It was the 80s at a different time. Wow. But, he's, but he said, because he can hit, lift heavier boxes. Uh. No one was lifting boxes. Right. <laughs> so I quit. You oh, did? You did? <laughs> you did. <laughs> in the position to quit, and that's the problem, there right? There are jobs everywhere in the mall. Oh, 100%. You know I, mean? yeah, I get it. it. Yeah, then, now yeah. maybe I will. I actually went through that as well um, at a, a different job I had, and I was a reporter, and I felt like I had negotiated really hard. I, I'm not a great negotiator, and now I get people to do it for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt I had negotiated really hardcore for this job, and I was really excited to do it, and I loved the job and had been doing it for two years before I stupidly, because I now I wanted to kill him, um, we started talking about our salaries, yeah. and I found out that um, a man that was doing literally the same, we were both backup anchors, we were both uh, reporters that were often at the lead of the show, both respected the same way, both wrote our own copy, both really good, he was making significantly more than me. Wow. And, I, and, and the feeling like of, of rage that you have, and it's like, if for no good reason. There was no good reason. So we actually did no, a poll. In your career, have you ever felt like you were passed over for an opportunity because you were a woman? Think on that one as well. Uh, it was 50-50. 50 percent of women said yes, 50 percent of women said no. Has that ever been the reality for any of you? Passed over where you found out you were making less? I've always no. been my own boss, so I wouldn't pass myself over. Actually, all of you were your own <laughs> boss. All of you were yeah. your own boss. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. I have to say, I was drawn, it didn't, no, but what I would say about that is I was raised very equal. Like, yeah. I was the youngest of five kids, and if the oldest brother could mow the lawn, then I had to mow the lawn, despite being a big age brat yeah. difference. Yeah. So I didn't really get it. Um, and I was always really drawn to jobs where I had more power, I guess. Like, yes. like in the restaurant industry, for example, I'm a server. Like, yeah. So, or, or a bartender, or whatever. I'm working for tips. So, the harder I work, the more I am going to make. Got it. We all made minimum wage, you know, yes. in that industry. Mm -hmm. And so, I was often drawn to those. You know, yeah. I dabbled in modeling and that kind of thing. Well, that's yes. a women thing. So, it's interesting. I, I wonder. I haven't thought about it really till now, but I wonder if I was always drawn to those type of jobs right. because I was raised that way. Interesting. Maybe. And, and part of the stereotypes too yeah. is that when we do negotiate or speak up and say, yeah. hey, I deserve more, we get penalized for it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We get penalized. Oh, so, absolutely. So much, yeah. so much is said yeah. about us having to advocate for ourselves, and I've been in the position of advocating myself and, and getting punished for it. Yes. Mm. yes. So yes. we never talk about the other side of it, which right. is you you will, there's a price to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's why a, a lot of women don't end up speaking up or saying anything at all, because you know that it, it's either going to be uncomfortable or there's actually going to be some penalization Definitely. that yeah. actually makes your workplace very uncomfortable. And we need that to move forward. In yeah. order for us to continuously take consistent action, I think we need more mis more women misbehaving. 
Period. Misbehave. Yeah. Misbehave. Yeah. Misbehave. Yeah. Break, break the stereotypes. Yeah. Break the gender norms. Yeah. When right. I think of the theme for this year, I am generation equality. Yes. In order for me to do that, to model that behavior, I yeah. have to show what that looks like. Right. I want my nieces and my nephews, yeah. and we know black, indigenous women of color, marginalized women yes. are still left behind. Yeah. At the bottom. Yeah. At the bottom, always. Yeah. So the fight continues. Right. And we have to be okay with the guilt, with the fear that you will be, uh, you know, penalized for breaking those norms, breaking those gender barriers, breaking those stereotypes yeah. is the only way for us to it move forward. Hard. So let's keep on going. It's hard yeah. to advocate yeah. for yourself, isn't it? Is. It is. And you know what? There's somebody who's taught me, there's a male in my industry, and we're very similar in what we do. And yeah. he has taught me so much to advocate for myself. But I think what, we, what I struggle with sometimes is it's true, we get that reputation as, oh, they might be difficult to yeah. work with, right? It's oh, like, oh, she's asking. And he will always get more money than I do. Mm. We do the exact same thing. And he's the one that has taught me to advocate for myself and say, you're worth more, so ask more. Yeah. But it's that struggle that, like, wait a minute, am I being more difficult? Are they not going to want to work with me again? Yeah. So it's kind of these thoughts that come through our head, and I so agree with you. We have to be... Have to misbehave. I love that. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's yeah. Cool. And also, that, yeah, that come from other women as well. Just to say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, yeah. patriarchy is a cool system that's held up by a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. strong system. Yes. So women yeah. hold it up, men hold it up. It's sort. It's systemic. That's the whole point of systemic. Yeah. Racism's the same way. It's yes. like held up sometimes by people within the community. Yeah. Yeah. So all of these structures are um, they're very strong and they're hard to get rid of. Um, I want to talk about gender roles because we do mm -hmm. seem to think, and I know. In my neighborhood, there are, um, you know, there are a lot of stay-at-home dads. There are, um, there are sort of differences. So we asked our viewers, how do gender roles in your home differ from a typical 1950s household? And 29% of women or our viewers said basically they're the same, and 71% said couldn't be more different. Now, what do you think is the is the major difference between what's happening now and what was happening, say, in the 50s? We're doing Recipe for a Perfect Wife as our book club pick, mm -hmm. and some of the stuff in here is so enraging. Yeah. It's a 1950s <laughs> housewife, and you're just reading it, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. So you feel like we've come a long way, but other people might argue maybe not so much. What do you think, Shona? I think we have come a long way in a sense that I know our father... Not enough, though, yeah. um, <laughs> for most people. But I, you know, my personal experience, our, my my dad, my husband's dad, like they've got the old school traditional rule. Yeah. Like my dad can make a peanut butter sandwich, and that's about it. Like mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for real. But then my husband Greg, once I taught him to cook, like we started cooking together, he yeah. actually enjoys it, and there's no like shame in it. If I'm still Good. working, he's like, I've got dinner, babe. Okay, great. I'll make dinner. You know, we have it planned ahead because, yeah. you know, I'm Shona. Um, so we have... <laughs> so he knows what to make and that kind of thing. Yeah. But that's not something that would probably ever cross my, cross my dad's mind to ever do. Yeah. You right. know, so there is steps, I think, generation by generation, yeah. yes. maybe? And circumstance by circumstance. Yeah. Totally. Listen, we could go on and on and on and on, yeah, as you yeah. know. So we will keep the conversation going, but thank you so much to these really strong, beautiful women for joining us.